Hello. In today's lesson, we're going to cover the Michelson-Morley experiment. This was a very important experiment, which led to the development of Einstein's special relativity. By the end of today's lesson, we're going to describe the setup of the Michelson-Morley experiment, as well as the results of the experiment, and hopefully be able to uh, talk about what some of the conclusions of the experiment were. Firstly, however, we need a little bit of context. So Galileo came up with the original theory of relativity, where he said that all motion is relative. For example, imagine you're traveling along on a vehicle and you throw a ball in the air and it goes straight up in the air and you catch it. To you, traveling on the vehicle, the ball has gone straight up and straight back down. However, an observer on the roadside has seen the ball travel a distance equal to the velocity of the vehicle times the time that the ball is in the air. Equivalently, imagine you're standing on top of a train and you throw a ball forward at a speed v. To an observer on the side of the train, the ball moves at a speed v plus the speed of the train. This will be important in the context of uh, today's experiment. The second piece of context we need today concerns Maxwell Clark. Maxwell Clark said that light always travels at the same speed in a vacuum, that is, 3 times 10 to the power 8 meters per second. He said that this is the case no matter whom is observing. However, this created a huge uh, problem in physics. Both of these propositions could not be true. For example, imagine a rocket comes towards you at a speed v. The light from that rocket should therefore come towards you at a speed c plus v, the speed of the rocket plus the speed of the light. However, Maxwell Clark had said that all observers should measure the same speed of light, c. There was clearly a contradiction here, and the Michelson-Morley experiment was an attempt to resolve this contradiction. The Michelson-Morley experiment took place at the end of the 20th century. It was a relatively simple experiment using beams of light. The purpose of the experiment was to measure whether there was a difference in the speed of light relative to the motion of the Earth. That is, does a beam of light traveling in the same direction as the motion of the Earth travel at the same speed as a beam of light traveling perpendicular to the motion of the Earth? The Michelson-Morley experiment splits a single beam of light into two. One beam of light travels in a straight line towards a mirror, while another is reflected towards a separate mirror. They are then recombined at a detector. When the beams are recombined, they form an interference pattern at the detector. If the speed of light is different in different orientations of the experiment, then this should cause the interference pattern to shift. Michelson-Morley attempted this experiment in several different orientations. However, no shift in the interference pattern was observed. This implied the speed of light was indeed the same for all observers. However, scientists weren't ready to get rid of Galileo's ideas just yet. The idea that absolute motion did not exist had a very, very firm experimental grounding. Let's imagine you're on a train and you have no windows. If you're traveling at a constant speed, there is no experiment that you could perform to show that you were moving. It's similar to how as we travel along on Earth, we don't feel uh, the Earth moving as we pass through space. Taken together, these two ideas formed the basis of Einstein's special relativity. They were that absolute motion does not exist and that the speed of light is the same for all observers. Einstein formulated these as two postulates. Physical laws have the same form in all inertial frames and the speed of light in free space is invariant. These two postulates form the basis of special relativity. In the next lesson, we'll go over the meaning of these two postulates and explain special relativity.